Hello guys, welcome to a new video in Horta Americas TV. This is Carla Garcia, Horta Americas Technical Service. And today we will continue learning about plant nutrition. If you remember, our last video was on nitrogen. If you miss it, don't worry, we have the video on our channel, you just have to look for it. Well, today we will learn about another nutrient, which is potassium. Another very important nutrient for plant growth and development. But what is the difference between potassium and the rest of the nutrients? Well, potassium can be a key in many important plant processes. Has function, for example, in plant nutrition and this is totally related to nutrient uptake. And one of the most common functions of potassium is its function in enzyme activation. Then, controlling many important plant processes that we'll be covering in this video. Another important function of potassium is its role as osmotic regulator, taking an important role in stomata opening. As we know, stomata are constituted by two cells. When the cells are turgent, stomata are open. When cells lose turgency, stomata close. So we know that a lot of things are happening in stomata. So that is one of the reasons why potassium is very important, because potassium is a key element in this process. And now focusing on the role of potassium in our fertilizers. Potassium can help to protect an ion and cation balance. So it's very important to have the correct amount of potassium in order to create the ambient for the plant to take up the nutrients. If we think about the physiology of potassium in plants and we focus on plant production, which is the business that we care about. So what is the function of potassium in or yield or quality? The things what, that we carry about when we are growing plants. So um, potassium can affect uh, the fruit size, can affect the appearance, color, soluble solids, acidity, the vitamin content, the taste, and also shelf life. Sounds important, right? There is evidence supporting the role of potassium in fruit juice content, also vitamin C, and the resistance to degradation during transport and storage. So we better understand how potassium acts in plants and take action in monitoring potassium levels in or hydroponic fertilizers. But why potassium can affect so many aspects in plant production? Well, first, enzymes can accelerate many plant processes. Stomata opening and closure are very related to photosynthesis. Energy produced in photosynthesis is the fuel to keep growth and plant development. Also, stomata behavior affects the uptake of water and nutrients. So a lot of very important functions in here. But if we could summarize the main functions of potassium, I will say that potassium is involved in fruits, fruiting, even from flowering to fruit flavor, and also related to stomata behavior. In flowering, for example, and fruiting, we know that potassium and other nutrients are used to effectively run processes like pollen germination. If pollen cannot germinate and reach the ovule, then we will not have fruits. So this is why you will notice in most recipes when moving from a vegetative phase to a generative phase that the levels of potassium will change. Usually, levels of potassium will significantly be increased. We need more potassium to produce flowers and to produce fruits. Understanding a little of how we use potassium in hydroponic fertilizers, we first need to know that potassium is an ion positively charged, meaning a cation, and plays a role in cation exchange capacity. 
Therefore, potassium levels can affect directly pH value, osmotic pressure, and electrical conductivity. Now, the question will be, how much potassium do you need? This will always be crop specific, but trying to share an average range, uh, we can say plant need from 100 to 300 ppm of potassium in nutrient solution. Remember, this is totally crop specific and also depends on the stage of development. For leafy greens, for example, we can keep the same potassium for uh, the whole cycle. But in fruiting crops, uh, we tend to increase potassium in the generative phase. Here is an example of levels of potassium in fruiting crops and also leafy greens like lettuce. So you can see how uh, different crops have different requirements. When potassium levels are high, potassium can affect the uptake of other nutrients. These nutrients are calcium and also magnesium because all of these are passive nutrients. It's very important to keep optimum potassium levels in your crop because actually potassium constitutes about 10% of plant dry matter. If your source of potassium, for example, in here we have potassium nitrate, is lower than the recommended levels for a specific crop, you will have a general decrease in dry matter. You will have uh, less leaves, you will have uh, less uh, dry matter for crowns and also roots. In general, the plant will have a slower growth. Remember, potassium is important for stomata opening and closure. So everything starts there. If stomata conductance reduce, then less carbon dioxide will be fixed, equals to less photosynthesis. Here is an awesome scheme I found in a paper from Dr. Chokri Hafsi. Here you can see the chain reaction of lack of potassium within the plant. Let's start with light. Plant is trying to photosynthesize, but less CO2 is being fixed. This will affect growth. Then we'll have less leaf area. Also, the natural movement of potassium goes from old leaves to new leaves. Then less potassium will be available by older leaves. This will create a difference in cation exchange capacity where uh, now we will have an increase in the uptake of magnesium, sodium, and calcium. Then the plant now will start to regulate the root architecture, trying to take more, uh, to take more potassium because it's, the, the, it's not enough potassium there, so the plant will start to look for potassium. This will cause an overreduction of electron transport and production of toxic molecules, which will cause photooxidation equals to chlorosis and necrosis. The final result will be something like this. The symptoms of a potassium deficiency include a yellowish color on leaves and also uh, the yellowish colors is mostly at the border of the leaf and uh, you can also find some uh, dead tissue. The dead tissue can be also at the margin of the leaf or also you can have like some spots of dead tissue. In hydroponics, we have different sources of potassium that we can use uh, in our nutrient recipes. So here I'm just sharing uh, different sources like potassium sulfate, potassium nitrate, potassium phosphate, and potassium chloride. Uh, pot potassium chloride is mostly used for deficiencies because it has a lot of potassium. 
So when you are having problems with your plant, if you have less potassium and you check and you have symptoms of potassium deficiencies, you can use potassium chloride. Well, now you know a little bit more about potassium. Remember to keep your nutrient solution balanced and to do the proper modifications with your crop cycle in order to get the best quality of production for your crop. My name is Carla Garcia. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more videos. Uh, let comment, uh, give us some comments about the topics that you would like to see in our videos. And well, and that's it guys. Uh, see you later in our, in our next video.